Making bread is a good way to use up extra dairy products. I usually make something up as I go along and I'll show you how you can too with the help of a scale, baker's percentages, and a little math. This buttermilk served its main purpose and I need to figure out the weight of the water in it because that'll help me find out how much flour I need. That's 495 grams total, more than I thought. Buttermilk is about 90% water, so multiply that weight by 0.9 to figure out that there is about 445 grams of water in here. Now I can figure out how much flour to add to get the hydration level I want. 70% hydration sounds good today, so 70 grams of water per 100 grams of flour. Thanks to basic algebra, we can figure out the amount of flour by dividing the weight of the water by 0.7, so that's about 636 grams of flour. Now, after all that, I can finally figure out how much yeast and salt to add. 2% salt is typical, so I'll multiply 636 by 0 0.02. That's a little over 12 grams. I'll stop a little past 11. Salt interferes with the yeast and I ain't got all day. For the yeast, I'll multiply the 636 grams of flour by 0 0.015 for 1.5% and get about 9.5 grams. I'll stir in just enough to make sure that the yeast isn't all sitting on top and give it about 10 minutes to hydrate. Oh, look at the time. This is lemon time. That feels appropriate for this time of year. I think it'll go great in this bread. Now I will whisk until I can be reasonably confident that the salt is dissolved since I can't see it. At this moment, I'll add the thyme in before the flour is in there. It makes it a lot easier to mix in. It seems easiest to strip the leaves off the woody center straight into the bowl. Now I can finally add the flour. I'll start with about 50 grams of whole wheat flour so this isn't all empty carbs. I like to add whole wheat flour first because it is more absorbent and I feel like it mixes better into the excessive liquid. Now I'll finish off this bag of bread flour and start a new one to get up to the total of 630 whatever grams. As I mix this together, it seems more difficult to mix in the remaining dry flour than one would expect at 70% hydration. I'm guessing that is because of how acidic buttermilk is. Acids increase the hydration capacity of gluten to a point, so buttermilk, which has a pH of around 4.5, will produce a firmer dough than an equal amount of tap water, which is typically around 7 or 8. The pH of regular milk is 6.4 to 6.8. That kind of surprised me when I looked it up. I'm planning on making the freestanding loaf so I don't have to worry about the size of pan to put it in. I figured if the 70% hydration was too high I could add some extra flour, but I don't think I will need to. I was trying to avoid it, but I eventually get in there with my hands to work the rest of the flour in. At this stage the dough is as sticky as it's going to be, so I make sure to wet my hands with water. The kneading motion that I'm doing is more to make sure the flour is worked in than to develop the gluten. I will be doing that with a couple folds. It seems like it's all mixed in pretty well, so now I can let it autolyze for about half an hour. Now that that's done, I can get this out and fold it. I'm trying a new thing, sticking some parchment paper to the counter with some water. It's like one of those life hacks. If I added out the parts where the edges curl back and the middle gets all crinkled later, I'll look like a genius. Anyway, the gluten should have enough development now to stretch and fold in a complete circle, which will develop it even more. After the circle is complete, I'll put this bowl over it for 15 minutes to let the gluten relax and do it again. Before the second folding, I decide it could use some more lemon time. Then I just fold it in. This dough is holding its shape quite well. I'm glad I didn't use any more flour. Give it another 15 minutes and repeat one last time. I finally decided to add some sage to this. First I cut it into strips vertically without cutting all the way through the leaves and across the strips to get these little pieces. After I fold it one more time, I will have to wait at least an hour for it to rise. It doesn't seem like there's that much difference an hour later, so I take a warm plate and set it on there. 30 minutes after that, now it looks bigger. I can start shaping it into its final form. I'm going for sort of an oblong loaf shape. I watch a fair amount of bread making videos from people who actually know what they are doing and I have trouble remembering how to do anything but the most basic folds. The easiest thing I could have done was just fold around in a circle like I did to strengthen the gluten. I would have divided the dough in half though, because with this much I think it would have had trouble baking through all the way. I don't know how I feel about this thing, but it's like whatever man. Here's a little water so it doesn't dry out. 
It didn't seem to lose a lot of gas when I shaped it, so after 30 minutes it looks like it might be ready to go. Ah, oh, what the heck, I'll be fancy today. Here's some softened butter and an egg yolk. Mix that together. This is the only one of these that I have, but it'll do just as well as a smaller one. This will add flavor to the crust and help it brown up. I can also stick some more thyme on the surface so it can fall off and make a mess when I cut it later. But yeah, butter and lemon thyme go well together. I like to add melted butter and lemon thyme to flatbread before I bake it sometimes. So it's like focaccia but with butter instead of olive oil. I'll stick this in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and keep an eye on it. After checking on it several times, it finally hits 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the center. I think that took about 40 minutes. I neglected to score this bread because I tend to screw it up when I do, but fortunately it split across the top where I would have scored it instead of like down the side. This thing is huge. It probably would have been a good idea to split it into two loaves, but this is fine. I'll cut it open and it looks the way bread is supposed to look. It's nice and soft on the inside. Anyway, that's how you can reach a target hydration level in your dough for a given amount of liquid. You can do this with sour cream and yogurt too. They are 74% and 88% water, respectively. It is possible to make functional bread dough by just doing it by feel, but without knowing how much flour you're going to be putting in, it's difficult to get the right amount of yeast and salt too, so you might end up with dough that takes like 6 hours to rise. So that's it. I just wanted to show you all a straightforward way of figuring out how to reach a desired hydration level when you have a set amount of liquid to use up. Hopefully this isn't too dry.